Hey, welcome back. This is part two of episode nine with the comic shop, Pat and Eugene. Hey. Thanks, thanks for staying with us. We're going to have a little fun this segment. We're going to talk about, we're not going to talk about hypothetical or make believe superheroes. We're talking about the real effing deal, man. Real superheroes here in the Pacific Northwest. How kick ass is that? My mind is blown. Every time I hear one of these stories on the news in the newspaper, on Twitter, sightings, blogs, so works. essentially, it kind of broke a few months ago, right? And it's this guy, Phoenix Jones. That would be our main topic today. Yeah, so apparently, Phoenix Jones, he goes into a com- an actual comic shop. Which is awesome. Into the back room, and he changes into a costume. Comes out, and he starts patrolling the actual streets. He is hitting the streets in costume. I love the fact that the police acknowledge his existence as a superhero. Oh, yeah. I mean, they could just be like, uh, no comment, no comment. They've legitimately acknowledged this guy. He's been interviewed on, like, Cairo 7. There's been multiple articles about him. This is the real effing deal. Oh. we. You know what? We need more superheroes in the world. Yeah, we do. We do. And you know what the best part is? Apparently, in his costume, he wears a ballistics cup. <laughs> the man is thinking. He's like, I don't want to get shot in my junk. So he's protecting himself. <laughs> I, I gotta respect that. I, you know what? Do you have a Do you have a list of all the gear he wears when going on patrol? Uh, I know he he wears um bulletproof like armor, body okay. armor, and he carry he carries non lethal force. Well, actually, is a taser considered lethal? No, 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 no. Lethal is like non lethal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he carries mace and a billy club and a taser. He's not like, you know, he's not the Punisher. He's not going out icing, you know, <laughs> drug dealers, and- hanging them from rope. But- <laughs> You know, off buildings 20 stories up. Yeah, shooting them with a grenade launcher and then chucking them off a building so they get spiked down below on a fence. Like, he's an honorable guy, and apparently he always does a really good job of, like, keeping mental notes in case of, for, like, police reports and, and filing and calling and stuff. So he's doing his thing. You know what? And he's been really cool as far as, like, keeping his identity secret. Yeah. That's awesome. No, no, I, I think the police like tracked down the car he was driving, and it wasn't his. It was like his godmother's, and she wouldn't give him up. Yeah, it's his godmother's Kia. <laughs> He's driving a Kia out looking for scum. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I'm inspired. This is an ordinary citizen standing up against injustice. I, I wholly support this guy. Easy. You know what? He's my real life hero. He's a, he's a real life hero, and. I don't know, whenever I read, like, comic books about, like, Spider-Man and Batman, like, they may not be technically real, but they feel real to me, and they give me a belief that we all have the ability to make a difference, you know? It's staying true to your values and standing up and helping other people and fighting fighting corruption, and this guy's taking it to the next level. He's not just thinking about it or hoping for it or wanting it. He is being the change he wants to see, and he's going out there and kicking some He is scum. the symbol. He, yeah. Phoenix Jones. Come on our show, Phoenix Jones. We Fe- want you. Phoenix Jones, if you are listening, we would love to have you on the show. We will treat you like a god. We could do a little countdown of your most epic fights and stabbings and beatdowns and all that Or, or stuff. you know, you can just come onto our show and tell us, you know, what it's really like in, in your day-to-day life as far as going on patrol and how citizens can kind of protect themselves or take that step. I, I hear that everybody in your, in your league... His, in, in, in your justice yeah, league, yeah, yeah. in your justice league, you know, is like our like ex military, and they're all trained in like mixed martial arts, and which is you know really smart. But what if you say you have like just some kid who kind of wants to follow your steps, and you know becomes become a superhero themselves? What what's the best way for them to get involved with you know not necessarily putting themselves in danger? Anyway, if you're listening, um, contact us through either our YouTuber. Um, our blog site definitely and actually I, I um I went to the website and I guess there's like a thing like you know to them like being a superhero doesn't mean they don't have to like you don't have to physically you know get into an alteration with like a bad guy or something it can simply just embodying that spirit and you know seeing the crime and like calling 911 with really good notes you know and be a good witness yeah <laughs> <laughs> you can be a superhero to your community <laughs> I think we just wrote a PSA right there I think <laughs> <laughs> not quite 30 seconds, but that was a PSA right there. So, 
Yeah, you know, right now I'm kind of envisioning like uh, this guy in a mask not helping some guy, you know, not stopping a guy breaking into a car, and then it like turns and there's an Indian with a single tear down oh, his man. cheek. Oh man, that PSA is so sad. The old school one where like he's go, he's like floating down a creek, and then he sees a bunch of white people like littering and stuff, and then he just turns and it's just one tear down the cheek. That's heartbreaking. <laughs> That's heartbreaking. It makes me feel bad to be white. <laughs> so it worked. <laughs> as, as, overall, I love Phoenix Jones, and there are more pros and cons. But, again, it's what I do. I got, I got to play the other side a little bit, too. There are some cons. I mean, it's fun to pretend and dress up. But at the end of the day, this isn't make-believe. I mean, these are real bad people with guns or knives and stuff. He could seriously injure himself or even the person he's trying to save. I mean, there's definitely that risk. I heard that he was actually in situations where guns have been pulled on him. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard that he got stabbed in one of the altercations. Yeah, and I mean, take it a step further. Say he kind of ruffles some wrong feathers and he starts getting involved with uh, thwarting some, some bad guy. over Or some gang. Or some gang a few times. All of a sudden, you know, we're talking about like, I don't know, maybe following him, trying to find out who he is and people he knows. And we're talking like serious repercussions here. That's probably, that's, that's why, he, that's probably why he like never leaves a phone number to be reached at. That's a good first step. I would be very, very careful. So I, I hope none of that ever happens to him because I, I applaud him. But it is, it's it's got to be a worry. <clears throat> and and the biggie is we talked about like death and resurrection in comics, which is all good and fun. But there's I mean, this, none of that in real life. Yeah, this ain't gonna happen for Phoenix Jones. He gets capped in the face and he dies. Uh, sorry, there's no start over. There's no resurrecting you like three months later in a sweet epic graphic novel like Captain America or something. Like you're dead, dead. Not that it really had to be said. But. Folded time. Yeah. Continuum. <laughs> yeah. So, thinking of Phoenix Jones got me thinking, Eugene. If you were to be a superhero, what would be your power? What do you want? I'll give you two. You can get two superpowers to start off. What's your fighting style? What's your costume? Name? Have you ever thought about that kind of stuff? You know what? I would love the super strength because you get automatically get invulnerability with it. The super strength is a good baseline. I would go with the super strength and the super agility. I mean, crawl, wall crawling and stretching out large, really long and making lightning would be cool. But I, in terms of like a baseline foundation for my powers and really helping people in a variety of situations, super strength and agility goes a long way. Hmm. That's what I saw. I, I think my second one would be, I would love to be a pyrokinetic. Not just Ooh. in the sense of like being able to create it, but in the sense that I could control it. I could walk up to like a house on fire yeah. and basically put it out with my mind. Shh. I would be the ultimate firefighter. You gotta make me a promise, though. You do not be a D-bag like the guy in X-Men movies, okay? He was kind of cool at first, and then he went to Magneto's side, and was a huge D-bag. Or, you know what, the hotness from No Heroics. Yes. Be, that be guy's that. a total douche. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't know, so. like, like, <laughs> like, I loved him on the very first episode I saw, where he's like, I'm not getting enough tension, nobody knows who the hotness is. So he basically goes to a strip club, um, and lights a cigarette, sets off the fire alarms, and then he gets beat up by a bunch of strippers. That didn't really work out for him, did it? No, kinda, but he was just being back a back. D-bag. Yeah. And then all these strippers are like out, you know, a couple hours worth of work, and he's just like, he wants to party with a bad boy, and so some strippers end up beating him up. <laughs> oh man, good times, good times. But I mean, like, for me, I would see myself as kind of a Captain America-esque, not maybe in like the costume, but more in terms of like just the style. Like I would want to be like a really good tactician and just be super, super strength and agility and that kind of stuff. That would be pretty cool. That'd be really fun. And the uncanny ability to throw a shield and somehow have it always come right back to me. That is agility at its best. That's, that's the best right there. That's yeah. the best. Okay. Okay. And Phoenix Jones, hero or fool? Is he going to get himself hurt here? You know, odds are eventually something's going to happen if you do it enough. But you know what? It's definitely an occupational hazard. It comes with the territory. And hey, man, best of luck to you. I yeah. mean, you're, you're definitely becoming a symbol in your community. A lot of people are going to look up to you. You know, a lot of, a lot of younger kids are probably going to just change their entire lives if they end up meeting you once or twice. Yeah. And trying to model without, you know, of, of course, you're going to be like, hey, don't put yourself in harm's way, you know, train and study and, you know, stay in school and stuff. But yeah. there there could be some altercations that could potentially um, scold you for life or even end your life. 
Yeah, I mean, so, I, I think as long as he's not, like, breaking the law and he's using non-lethal force, I say go for it. I, and I hope the community embraces him. He's doing a great thing. So, but yeah, that was real fun. Good times. If you got any ideas for what your costume or super strengths would be, please let us know on our Facebook. But now we're going to move to Hero or Villain of the Week, which is brought to you by Bright House Images. You need a photo? Give them a call. AJ Mallory is a pro's pro. He'll do you right. And real quick, the number is 206-494-0282. We'll throw that info up on our Facebook as well. Well, I'm villain this week, so I think it's appropriate for me to start out. Okay. Uh, Who is your villain? Unfortunately, we had an untimely death uh, last week in the world. And you're familiar with Jackass. Well, one of the guys from the crew, Ryan Dunn, didn't unfortunately uh, die in a, in a car accident. That was incredibly sad. It was really sad. Um, a couple hours beforehand, he had tweeted a picture of himself drinking, and he ended up getting in a car crash with another guy. He was going 100, about 140 miles an hour, and he did die. My villain, though, is Roger Ebert. He had this really untasteful tweet shortly after his death. It was, friends don't let jackasses drink and drive. Now, he did clarify that the jackass is in reference to this is what made him a star. He was being part of the Jackass crew. He wasn't necessarily calling him a Jackass Jackass. And, but it, you know what? In such the way yeah, that he did it, it, just it sounded was, like he was calling him a Jackass. Well, he did it so soon after the death, death, it was just really untasteful. And technically, Ebert is right. Driving drunk is stupid. He was going 140 miles an hour. He was he had a .196, two times the legal limit. It was, it was really dumb what Ryan Dunn did. But it's like... Let people mourn, and his friends and all the guys on the Jackass crew saw that tweet and, and heard about it. It's just really insensitive. Did you need to do that, Ebert? What good were you doing? What was the point? It's just insensitive, poorly timed, and pointless. And I, it was yeah, it was just really. I don't know about slow. you, but I'm uh, I'm putting my thumb down on that comment. Yeah, it was just. What did you have to gain from that? There was nothing. So yeah, Roger what a Ebert, jerk. yeah, you're my villain of the week. You know what? Now I almost don't want to. You know what? You know what? Screw it. Even though, you know, that was a terrible, terrible situation, today is still, today, this specific day, 6-27-2011 is a fantastic day because the video game industry did get their win. The freedom of speech baseline for our entire society, you know, our, our protected rights and amendments are being upheld. So my heroes of the week are for reinforcing this, our supreme justices, all yeah, of them. Yeah, the judiciary branch. Yeah. Woo. You know, I'm, I'm even going to give it to the two that didn't vote in favor. Of yeah, you need, you need to have that back and forth. And yeah. There needs to be a good discussion, and I'm sure there was. And I'm sure that they there was pretty clear early that you know this was gonna video games was gonna win. So you almost never see a nine nothing. It's pract It's it's pretty darn rare yeah. on the supreme supreme court. So I'm not too. Surprised that there was two that voted against it. So, yeah, there you go. Hero or villain of the week. It is done. Hey, let's let's let people know we're still doing our subscription drive on YouTube, right? We are. I mean, hit me with some info about that for the people. You know what? We want a hundred subscribers. For the first one hundred subscribers, I get an email. I put you into a giant spreadsheet, and then we'll have the number generated, just kind of randomly from numbers in the hats. I'm kind of a kind of a fan of taking some small children and just painting numbers on their back and then oh, playing definitely. paintball. They're, they're, yeah, they're just the perfect size for it, so yeah, it really yeah. makes sense. And, you know, whoever we, we shoot, you know, your number gets a prize. Well, and we thank you people who have already helped us out. We were at 11 last week, and we are now at a... 33. Solid 33, so... Which means we, in one week, we tripled our listeners. We did, so yeah. we appreciate your help. Keep it going. Help us out, and remember... Check out the video, follow the instructions, and for an extra entry, go to our Facebook and hit us with a topic suggestion to double your odds. Don't forget to leave your YouTube account information in your suggestion so definitely. we can cross-reference it. Definitely, definitely. So we appreciate you all helping us out with that. And I, that's it. Episode 9 yeah. is in the books. Be sure to like it if you liked it. Yeah, like it on our YouTube. Go to our Facebook. Check that out. And hit up the Twitter. I'm Pat, and this is Eugene, as always. Later. We'll be back next week. Bye. Inside.